The world is a, is a crazy and tragic place at the moment. Um, and, uh, and the Security Council is, is a far from perfect institution. But it's what we've got. And we have to find a, a way of making it more impactful and more effective. Because unfortunately, uh, it has failed far too often. It was a lot busier than we could have expected. Uh, for very tragic reasons uh, from a human perspective. Uh, we were expecting, of course, that, uh, that things would happen while we were on the Security Council that we would have to respond to, but we could really never have dreamt the scale of, uh, of conflict uh, that the Security Council would attempt to try and deal with, uh, whether that was in Ethiopia, uh, where hundreds of thousands of people have been killed, uh, it's hardly even been on the news uh, in most parts of the world. Uh, and Ireland was determined uh, to raise the, um, the human suffering that was happening in what effectively was uh, a civil war in Ethiopia. Um, and of course, Afghanistan and the, um, the exit from Kabul, which uh, unfortunately has created huge uh, suffering uh, and, and vulnerability for the female population. I never thought that as a foreign minister and as a defence minister for Ireland that I'd be witnessing a war on this scale on the continent of Europe again. I mean, this is brutality and aggression, the level of which we haven't seen since the Second World War, uh, where a military superpower, Russia, has decided to try and change international borders by force, uh, by not only targeting Ukraine, Ukraine in terms of their military, uh, but now unapologetically and blatantly targeting civilians and civilian infrastructure as well to try and make life impossible for and in Ukraine. Uh, and so far that's seen almost 8 million Ukrainians uh, flee uh, into the EU. 65,000 of them have come to Ireland and are living in our homes in Ireland uh, and will continue to be welcome, uh, welcome uh, in my country. There is a Security Council resolution that allows a, a UN-managed border crossing between Turkey and, and northwest Syria. The crossing is called Bab al-Hawa. I have visited, visited twice in the last two years, spoken to NGOs there, to, to the various different UN organizations that are involved. Uh, just so we're clear, this is four and a half million people, almost the population of Ireland, uh, that are being supported and in some cases kept alive uh, by international humanitarian uh, support. History will be a very harsh judge of, of lots of countries in terms of what has been allowed to happen in Syria uh, and the human suffering that has flown from that. Um, and let's hope that we find a way of bringing the madness of war in Ukraine to an end uh, in a much, much shorter time frame than has happened in Syria or in Yemen for that matter. You know, the European Union and others around the world have been very supportive of helping Ukraine to protect itself. Um, from an Irish perspective, I mean, we are a militarily neutral country, but we're not neutral when, there, when one country is blatantly breaching international law, blatantly breaching a UN charter. Uh, and effectively invading its neighbour. You, know, you can't be neutral on that. Um, and, and so, of course, we want to find a way of supporting a strategy that can bring this conflict to an end. My experience on the Security Council has been one of frustration at times. Um, you know, there are many po vulnerable populations around the world who rely on the Security Council to protect them and their interests. And we fail over and over again to do that in many cases. I don't believe that this British government wants to go into the, the next general election in the UK still talking about Brexit. Um, uh, and I think that there is a recognition that the scale of some of the other challenges that we face today globally and on the continent of Europe, whether they're economic challenges, uh, whether they're security challenges, are such that the United Kingdom and the EU need to be working together as partners and friends. We want to make sure that 
that our place in the EU and the EU single market is safe, that we have no border infrastructure between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, that we have an all-island economy that can function and reinforce peace and good relations, and that, of course, the connection between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom can also function to the greatest extent possible as well from a trade perspective. Don't, don't confuse the, the tension that has clearly been evident during the Brexit process between Dublin and London with, with a lack of partnership and cooperation between Britain and Ireland because the trade between Britain and Ireland across the Irish Sea has never been stronger. Um, uh, we work together on lots of things uh, and will continue to do so. I hope that in the next few weeks uh, we will find a way to make the protocol work for everybody, unionist, nationalist, London, Dublin, Brussels, uh, and we'll finally allow ourselves to be able to move on from this circular and negative debate that has had such a, such a negative impact on Northern Ireland for the last few years. We want to go back into a devolved government sooner rather than later, regardless of the Brexit issue. They believe that's a separate issue. Um, so we have to find a way, of course, uh, for other powerful countries to dominate their neighbours militarily.